Welcome to Proverbs 31 by Design. My name is Tina Heisman. I help Christian women who are struggling with the overwhelm of trying to balance being a wife, mother, and career woman. When they work with me, they discover how to create their own unique level of balance in life so they can finally experience the joy, passion, fulfillment, and success that they have been seeking. So, On the podcast in April, we are going to be focusing on bringing more joy, happiness, and amusement into the different areas of our lives. I chose this theme because of April Fool's Day on April 1st. I just thought April, you know, that day brings joy and happiness and funniness. And so let's talk about bringing more of that into our lives. And so today, we're going to talk about one way that we can feel more happiness in our marriages. But before we get started, I want to let you know that I have a free private Proverbs 31 community on Facebook where you can come to get inspiration for your life. Search Proverbs 31 by design in the Facebook search bar. Also, I have created a free download called The Ultimate Guide to Guilt-Free Self-Care. It's a guide to help you take care of yourself in mind, body, and spirit so you can feel like your best self every day. Visit my website to download it. Okay, now let's dive in and talk about one tip to feel happier in your marriage. So there really are many ways that we could talk about finding more feelings of happiness in our marriage, but today I want to share one with you that is simple, but not easy, and it is profound, and it will work wonders for you as it does for me and my clients as well. So let me start with a story about a client. This was my client, Katie. So she and her husband had finally scheduled a long overdue date night. These two have three small children and they live in an area without family. And so they have not a lot of help with childcare. And also they feel very cautious about who they leave their children with. So it had been a few months since they had a date, which as we all know is not the greatest. But they know the value of a date night, and so they finally got one arranged, and the day finally arrived for the date. And that day, Katie's husband had plans to participate in a fishing tournament. And he assured Katie that he would be home on time for their date, no problem. So as you can imagine, to make a long story short, he was not home on time. One thing led to another at the fishing tournament, And he did not get home until after 6.30 when he was supposed to be picking up the babysitter at 5.30. Katie was really upset. And when he finally did come home, she lost her temper with him and then gave him the cold shoulder shoulder for the rest of the night. So this was not the romantic date night that she had in mind. She was angry, rightfully so. So Katie brought this to me to work on because she was tired of thinking about it and feeling angry, and she wanted to feel better. So we started by walking through the scenario and trying to understand Katie's thoughts and feelings about it. So first, she shared the story of what happened, just like I shared with you, and then she explained her thoughts about it. So she thought it was rude of him to be late. She thought it was disrespectful. She thought it was insensitive. And she thought he should have left the tournament early if he had to, to get back in time for the date. And she thought that because he didn't leave, he must not care about her or her feelings. And so that leads us right into the next point, her feelings. Her feelings as a result of her husband being late for their date. Katie felt sad that this long overdue date got ruined. She felt disrespected. She felt unimportant. She felt unloved. She felt rejected. So what could make Katie feel better? She wanted to feel happy again and peaceful. Is the answer for her to fix her husband and make sure he never makes this mistake again? That's the solution that many of us women have tried over and over and over again. But it never works, sad to say. Only leads to more frustration, am I right? So the solution that I walked Katie through was to examine her thoughts about the situation. 
And I shared with her that there was one key thought that she could change that would have changed everything. And so we went looking for the thought. And the thought that was bringing her the most pain and discomfort was the thought that he doesn't care about her. She was thinking in her mind, he doesn't care about me. Because he was late, he must not care about me. That was really causing her all of this pain. And so that's really important to know which thought is really bothering you. Then the next question I had for Katie was a big one. (laughs) I said, is it possible that there is at all any other reasonable explanation for your husband thinking it was okay to come home late for the date other than he doesn't care about you? Is it possible that there's anything else it could be that he doesn't care about you. And so she had to think for a few minutes. But then she surprised me. And these are her words. She said, well, he hardly ever does anything fun like that. And I know he really enjoyed it. In fact, he was sending me pictures throughout the day. And also, he was able to hang out with some friends that day that he doesn't get to see very often. And so I know he really liked that. Wow, girls. Those were some pretty compassionate thoughts. Those thoughts softened her. They allowed her to put herself in his shoes, and they gave her compassion and understanding for the man that she loves and another outlook on the situation. And so next I asked her if she still thought that he doesn't care about her. And her reply is something that we can all remember. She said, I'm still really disappointed that our date night got ruined, but I know he loves me, and I know that he enjoyed that fun time with his friends, and that was good for him. Wow, girls, what a turnaround. Just from a few minutes of talking about it and examining her thoughts and feelings and choosing to see a different possible explanation. And that is what is so exciting about Katie's story, because even though his, her husband's actions made it look like he didn't care about her, during our coaching session, she was able to choose to believe otherwise. She was able to choose peace over anger. She was able to choose happiness over sadness, right? By looking at her negative thought, that he doesn't care about me, she was able to see that that was not true. It's not the truth. And we can all do the same in our marriages. When we are hurt, we can remind ourselves that our spouse most certainly wants the best for us, that they love us. And remembering that will help us look for the best possible explanation instead of the worst. You see, that's what was happening for Katie. When he was late, she assumed the worst, that he doesn't care about her, instead of looking for the best possible explanation. When we do that, we will see the signs and signals of love and care that are there with our spouse. But when we let the anger get the best of us, we're blinded to the fact that anything good be could be going on, right? The anger just blinds us. And so when we assume the best possible explanation, we are able to give grace, which creates the peace, love, and happiness that we say we want in our marriages. So when we can have a positive reaction in a negative situation, you guys, that's that's the stuff that like builds resilience in marriage. It grows our marriages when we can come at a negative situation from a more positive perspective. This is life-changing for all of us. But I know that it is easier said than done and that it is so helpful to have a coach to talk to, someone who can guide you through this process. And so I'm here for you. And if you would like to explore creating more happiness in your marriage, reach out to me for a complimentary discovery call. We can take a look at where you are and what's going on 
in your marriage and where you want to be and what's holding you back. Also, remember, I have the ultimate guide to guilt-free self-care on my website that will help you feel like your best self every day. And you can come into the Proverbs 31 community on Facebook for further inspiration. And I would love to see you there. Okay, that is all for this week. Thank you so much. I will see you next week.